The ultimate fisherman's rib tutorial. Hi everyone, my name is Norman and in today's video I'm going to show you how to knit the fisherman's rib and everything you need to know about it. Like how to knit neither edges, the best cast-ons, how to decrease the fisherman's rib and of course how to fix mistakes with a crochet hook. I don't think there's a single simple knitting stitch pattern where you will find so many conflicting instructions on the internet. And I thought it's about high time we get some structure back into the topic. So let's dive right into it and show you how to knit the fisherman's rib. Let's start with the basic repeat first and then I will help you understand the pattern. For the fisherman's rib you would typically cast on an odd number of stitches and add one salvage stitch on each side. So I'm going to cast on 17 plus 2 stitches here using a standard long tail cast on. So I cast on my 19 stitches here and now you need to knit one setup row and you will only have to knit this once. So I'm going to slip the first stitch here because it's my uh, selvage stitch. And then I'm going to purl one, knit one across the whole row. So a basic one by one rib stitch, just alternate between knit and purl stitches across the whole row. So nothing fancy happening here. And here that last stitch, that's our selvage stitch and we are going to purl it as well. So we will begin and end with two, well, one slip stitch and two purl stitches. And then you turn around and now we can start with the fisherman's rib repeat. So I'm going to slip the first stitch and now we are going to do something well fancy but it's actually quite simple. So instead of knitting this stitch here as normal we are going to dive into the loop here one row below. So here one row below and we are going to knit that stitch here through that loop and drop it. The next stitch is we are going to purl and that is already the whole repeat. Here for the next stitch we are going to dive here into the row below and knit that. Purl one, go into the row below, oops, drop it and purl. And that is already the whole secret. Let's do that a couple of more times in slow motion. And from here you continue alternating between these two stitches. Always purl one and knit one below. Purl one, knit one below. Purl one, knit one below. And here that last stitch, that's our selvage stitch and we are going to purl it. And then turn around, slip that first stitch and now you are going to stick to the very same repeat. So you purl one and then you go knit one row below. Purl one and 
one below. And the reason why I said is um, we are going to stick to the very same repeat is that here this stitch here appears to like a knit stitch so it has this V here and this means you have to knit into the row below and this stitch here has this bump at its base it's a purl stitch so you are purling it and no matter if you cast on an even number or an odd number of stitches if you stick to that simple inside purl all these purl stitches and knit all the knit stitches uh, into the row one or one row below you are going to produce a fisherman's rib and the only thing where you really need to pay attention to is those salvage stitches they may change a bit and here in the third row, it's going to be the exact same repeat you had in the very first row. But again, if you stick to purling or purl stitch and knitting all sti knit stitches below, you are going to be fine and there is no need to check uh, repeats, count stitches or so. Just read your knitting and it will be very simple once you got used to it. You will soon notice that the fisherman's rib is a kind of slow knitting stitch pattern. So it will typically take around, well, six, eight or even 10 rows until those fantastic structured and squishy ribs emerge. So be a bit patient after the second row or so it typically looks still a bit odd. So it will take a while to emerge. And you will also notice that the fisherman's rib is quite the yarn eater. So you need quite a lot of yarn at least compared to say a one by one rib stitch. But is this the only way to knit the fisherman's rib? Well, there are actually three more ways to achieve the exact same result. Let me show you. So I cast on a couple of stitches with my long tail cast on again and I knit it across with knit one purl one already. So this is the purl version. So we are going to slip that first stitch. That's our salvage stitch and now we are going to knit the first stitch and here the third stitch that's a purl stitch and we're not going to purl it instead we are going to go into the stitch one row below and purl it oops purl it drop that off the needles knit one again go into the stitch one row below and purl it knit one go into the stitch one row below and knit one. Let's do that a couple of more times in slow motion. And here on the other side in our third row, it's the exact same thing. So every stitch that appears to as a purl stitch or appears to be in purl stitch, we are going to purl one row below and all the knit stitches, you knit them. So it's basically the exact same repeat, just upside down or mirror inverted, however you want to call it. So from here on, you can just continue doing this. And if you repeat these simple two stitches over and over again, so knit one purl into the row below, you will produce the fisherman's rib as well. And I promise you there won't be a single difference. So it will look exactly the same. But some people 
hate pearling. Others love it. Some have problems with their pearl tensions and so on. And you get to decide what is easier for you or looks neater for you. There is not just one answer here. There are yet two more ways to knit the exact same fisherman's rib. But before I go on, I would kindly like to mention that shooting these videos takes a lot of time and effort. Consider supporting my work on Patreon. That way you can ensure that I will be able to create more elaborate videos like this one here for many years to come. Plus, you get access to special patterns, knitting tips and knitting tutorials way beyond the ordinary. Even a small contribution helps. Now back to the fisherman's rib. Let's help you understand what you are doing first. So when you knit into the row below, like so, and you drop that stitch off the needle, what will happen is this stitch here, it will slowly unravel. Let's help it a bit here. It will slowly unravel and create a little bit of slack here on the backside instead of a proper stitch. Another way to say this is when knitting the fisherman's rib, you are basically just adding a new row for half of the stitches, the ones that you purl. The other half doesn't make any progress. You add one stitch, so this one here, and one unravels. It's like making one step backward and then one forward, uh, you end up at a start again. And there's another way to achieve the exact same thing. So I'm back to my swatch here where I knitted into the row below and now I will knit another transition row. Careful, this is explanation only, not part of the repeat. So I won't purl these stitches, instead I will slip them with yarn in front. And then I will knit the knit stitches into the row below. I'm just going to uh, slip the purl stitches without knitting with yarn held in front. So a very simple motion. And um, this will create yarn overs here. And um, but remember, this is just a transition row I need for demonstration purposes only or if you want to transition to a different way to knit the fisherman's rib. So I finished this via transition row and now here's the third version to knit the fisherman's rib. So like I said, the fisherman's rib is all about not making any progress for every second stitch. So what you can also do is, is so in our little transition row, we created this, well, these double stitches with the wrap around and you need to knit them together. And here, these purl stitches, we don't want to make any progress. So what we will do is we will bring the yarn to the front and slip these purl stitches purl-wise without knitting. Then we bring the yarn to the back and knit these double stitches. And what this does is here, this slipping with the yarn held in front, it will create the same kind of slack you get when you knit into the row below and things unravel. But in this case, you do it right away and not one row below. And um, here, those uh, double stitches here, you knit them together so it will transport this slack here. Here, this is our slack here. And by knitting it together, you will create, uh, transport the slack here to the back side. And here on the back side, you do the exact same thing. So for every purl stitch you do one of, you bring the yarn to the front and slip it without knitting and those double stitches you knit them together. It's always the same. And now you tell me if you can spot a difference here. We started with what most people call fisherman's rib and then we continued with the brioche stitch. Well. 
to be quite frank, there is no difference. Maybe sometimes because your individual tension is different for some of these stitches, you might see one, but technically speaking, there is no difference and it's the exact same thing. Now, just to get this straight, most brioche tutorials will do you to uh, tell you to do a yarn over and then slip that stitch purlwise. But uh, really, you don't have to do it separately. Just bring the yarn to the front and then slip that pearlwise without knitting and actually uh, that way of describing it, it well it's more in line with the nature nature of a brioche stitch or fisherman's rib which is actually just another form of double knitting but more on that later just one quick little note here. If you would like to start your fisherman's project using this technique, well, you have to knit a different setup row. So you are not going to purl that first stitch. Instead, you slip it with yarn in front and then you knit one stitch. And that would be your repeat for the setup row if you want to knit brioche style. Always slip one with yarn in front and knit one across the whole row. Now, can you also use the brioche method to produce the fisherman's rib pearlwise? Well, of course you can. In this case, you would have to knit another transition round. So you slip all the knit stitches with yarn held in front and purl these stitches. Slip the knit stitches with yarn held in front and purl into the row below. And then in the next round, you can easily continue your fisherman's rib the, well, brioche style. Let's, let me finish that row. And then you just turn things around. And then you can purl the double stitches together and slip the knit stitches. Purl the double stitches, slip the knit stitches. So it's really the same thing and you can use so many different ways uh, to knit the fisherman's rib stitch, your stitch or however you want to call it. Again, see here you will create the exact same results and can you spot where I purled into the row below and where I knitted into the row below? I certainly can't and the result will be the exact same knitting stitch pattern. So why the different names? Well, it's all about regional differences. 200 years ago in the times before the internet as the great unifier, there were different knitting uh, traditions in England, France, Germany, Germany and so on. So here in Germany we call these stitches patent or patent muster. And you just stick to whatever version you think is, is easier for you. Some people are better at purling or knitting into the row below or maybe the yarn over version is easier for you. Just knit some simple swatches and check what looks neater for you and feels easier. For me it's the brioche version that I feel is above and beyond easier to knit but you know your decision but it does get a little bit crazier yet so fisherman's rib and double knitting are also the exact same thing and you might have wondered about the slow progress and that's because you only always knit half of the row or to be more precise you only ever knit the right side and not the wrong side or the side facing towards you. So if you push fisherman's rib together like this, you the result will be a fabric that looks like almost like stockinet stitch here on the right and on the wrong side. So essentially what you are doing is well it's a botched double knitting because you carry the yarn in front instead of the back. So why is it important to understand that fisherman's rib is just another form of double knitting? Well, 
First of all, fisherman's rib will look much better if you use relatively small knitting needles because here that slack you create on the back side, well, it will blow up your gauge. And that knowledge is also very helpful when it comes to cast-ons. So the fisherman's rib is a kind of double knitting that follows a knit one pro one pattern. So a rib stitch. And what's the best cast-on for these kind of patterns? Of course, a Italian cast-on or a tubular cast-on. So for a super neat transition, simply start your fisherman's project with an Italian cast-on. I'll link you my full tutorial up in here in case I'm going too fast but let's cast on a couple of stitches together. So start with a simple uh, twisted loop or a slip knot in the slingshot position and now you just have to go under the yarn towards your thumb, grab the yarn. Go under the yarn towards your index finger, grab the yarn. Under your thumb, grab. Under your index finger, grab. Under the thumb, grab. So it's a very, very simple kind of weaving motion. And you will want to end this with a knit stitch. So with, if you go under the thumb, you will create a knit stitch. And now we are going to do something fancy uh, because the Italian cast on creates the perfect base for a one by one rib stitch. But we want a salvage stitch. We will uh, end this cast on with a uh, long tail cast on stitch, just one. And then you can turn things around and uh, get this in focus, turn things around and follow the uh, one by one rib stitch pattern. So we will slip that first stitch, we will purl one and you will notice that the knit stitches are sitting on the needle twisted so you go into the back loop and follow the rib stitch pattern again Please do watch my full tutorial on the Italian cast on if this is too fast. We are just knitting the very same setup row we did before and then we will purl the last stitch. And from here you can just follow your regular fisherman's rib stitch repeat any way you like. So maybe you prefer knitting into the row below. I don't, but maybe that's easier for you. And you just knit across. And I'm going to knit a couple of more rows to show you the result. And if you continue with the fisherman's rib across an Italian cast on, you will create this beautiful seamless edge isn't this beautiful? Again, here, this was the long tail cast on edge. I mean, for the right kind of project, this kind of closed edge can be quite beautiful as well. But here, this is the Italian cast on edge. And here is another thing I want to show you. You can also create a selvage of three stitches on each side in instead of just one and I actually believe this looks a bit neater. So you cast on an odd number of stitches but you add three selvage stitches on both sides and then you do the following selvage. So you knit one and then you slip one with yarn held in front purlwise and then you knit one. And then in this case, you do the regular setup row repeat. So knit one, purl one. You can do this with a tubular cast on or a long tail cast on or whatever cast on you prefer. And here, the last three stitches that's knit one, slip one purl wise with yarn held in front and knit one again. And here on the back side, you slip one purlwise with yarn held in front, knit one, slip one purlwise with yarn held in front. And then you can follow your regular um, fisherman's rib repeat. 
any way you like. Of course, if you want to do the brioche version, you would need a different setup row. So I have a full brioche tutorial here on my channel in case you want to check that out. And then here, those last three stitches, oops, those last three stitches, you do the exact same. So you slip one pearlwise with yarn held in front, knit one, slip one pearlwise with yarn held in front. And then you, that's already the full repeat. So here in the third round, you would knit one, slip one pearlwise with yarn held in front, knit one again. And this will create quite the beautiful edge. So here in the fourth round, you slip one, knit one, slip one, provide with yarn held in front and so on. So it's always the same thing. And I'm going to fast forward a bit to show you the results. And if you continue with this repeat, you get these beautiful, well-rounded edges here on both sides that I personally think will look very, very lovely for a scarf. And I guess that this is also the reason why I only knit the fisherman's rib with an odd number of stitches because that way you get a nice um, symmetrical edge here. So here there is the same kind of pearl welly here on this side and the same here on the wrong side. And if you cast on an even number of stitches, this side would look like this. And I just feel it doesn't look pretty. If you are knitting in the round, of course, you will have to cast on an even number. Now there's one question I get asked a lot. How do you decrease a fisherman's rib? And it's actually remarkably simple once you realize. I told you that fisherman's rib is a form of double knitting and you knit the front and the back at the same time. So this means uh, you also have to decrease the front and the back at the same time. As a result, the basic fisherman's decrease is already a double decrease that turns three stitches into one. And there is a uh, left leaning and a right leaning decrease and they are actually the exact same thing only done in a different order. And basically it boils down to purling here that central stitch and then you slip either this stitch over the central stitch first or this stitch over the central stitch first and depending on this order it will be right or left leaning. Sounds confusing? Well let's do it together. So you start here, here let's do a um, left leaning decrease first. So you start with this rib here and you enter this stitch here the way you normally would, one row below, but then you don't knit it, you just slip it. And then you purl that central stitch. And then you pick up this stitch here coming from behind and slip it back to your knitting needle, slip that stitch back. And now you pass this over. And then you slip this central stitch back to the right needle and pass the other double stitch over as well. And there is your right uh, left leaning decrease. Let's do that one more time. So you slip that, then you purl the central stitch. You unravel this stitch here, slip it back, slip back, pass over slip back, pass over. So there is a lot of slipping involved to create this uh, left leaning decrease, but really it's all about, uh, you know, it's tossing or binding off the stitch over the central stitch. Of course, you can use the exact same principle to knit a right leaning decrease as well. So knit up to the position where the next stitch is one of these knit stitches, then slip one row below and purl the central stitch. And now you need to pass this double stitch over the middle stitch first. So it's easy, you don't need to slip things around and then pass this, unravel this stitch and pass over. 
there is your right leaning decrease. Let's do that one more time. So unravel, pearl, pass over. Now some tutorials won't have you unravel this last stitch here, but I always do that. Um, the difference is only apparent when you do color work. So that's how you decrease stitches in fisherman's rib. Now there's another question I get asked a lot. How do you fix mistakes in fisherman's rib? And it's actually doable, but a lot more difficult than when you fix normal a normal knitting where you can do it with a crochet hook. You can do that as well, but it will be a little bit more difficult for beginners. So I actually recommend thinking, so knitting backwards. So you always go into the stitch below, but by now you should be very experienced with doing this and unravel one stitch at a time. So one, almost dropped my needle there, one stitch at a time. Now you will end up with these double stitches here. You will end up with these double stitches. And if you watched a normal fisherman's rib tutorial, you will go like, yeah, well, what do I do with them? But in this case, remember that transition row I knitted before? Well, you can just knit them together, purl one, knit one together. Basically what you're doing here is you are transitioning from regular brioche to fisherman's rib style knitting, but that's how you can fix the mistake. Just think knit backwards and then do one of the transition rows I showed you before. And then you can turn things around and uh, knit into the row below the way I showed you before. If you drop a stitch and things unravel, well, you can still rescue things, but it will be a lot more difficult. So the first thing you want to make sure is that you secure the stitch that dropped. And then let's look at the anatomy of the brioche stitch. So there are little strands here that are connected to the next pearl ridge on either side. And then there are strands that are connected here to this next ridge here. And you need to find the next strand that is connected to this ridge. And then there will be, then you need to go below. So here's a, a strand, you ignore that. You go below the next two strands and pull that one through. Then from here, you need to find the next little strand connected to the ridge. And again, you ignore this and you go be through below these two and pull everything through. Find the next little one. So here, this one and go below the one and two next two stitches. And in that manner, you can fix brioche stitch. There's one last issue we have to talk about. Um, how do you finish the fisherman's rib? What's the best bind off? Well, the easiest version is just using the standard bind off and binding off in patterns. So you knit every stitch the way it appears. So this is a knit stitch, you knit it. And this is a knit stitch, so you knit it and then you pass over. Next stitch is a purl stitch, you purl it, pass over. Whoops, pass over, slip there. Then next stitch is a knit stitch, you pass over. So it's super simple. Uh, consider doing this with one or two needle sizes larger because uh, you want a stretchy edge and the fisherman's rib is quite the stretchy pattern and the standard bind of will constrict your fabric. You can also use a tapestry needle to bind off your fisherman's rib and do a so-called tubular bind off.
This means break the yarn, leave a tail that is at least three times as long as your project is wide, thread it on a tapestry needle and then start binding off. The problem is when you have a salvage stitch, the th things won't uh, work out anymore. So you have to get rid of that salvage stitch first. So just decrease it right away decrease it right away. So your first stitch is that knit stitch here. Typically you wouldn't use this method when you have a salvage stitch like this, but the easiest version is goes like this. So you need two preparation stitches. You go into this stitch here purlwise, pull the yarn through, and then go into this stitch coming in from behind knit wise. So you go in from behind and knit wise. I have a full bind of tutorial in case you are interested. I'll link it to you up in here, I think. And now you need to drop this stitch knit wise. So you go in, uh, sorry, this is knit, knit wise and you drop it off the needle, pull tight. And now you have to find the next V here and go into that stitch purlwise. Purlwise. Then here this stitch, you drop it purlwise. It's a purl stitch after all. And pull tight. So this is basically just the Kitchener stitch done on one needle. And then find the next purl stitch here, this one, and go into it knit wise. But keep the first stitch on the needle, pull tight, then drop the first stitch knit wise and go into the next stitch purl wise. Pull tight, make sure the yarn doesn't get caught here. And you can already see that this is creating a super neat edge. And in that manner, you need to graft all stitches all the way to the end. Drop knit wise, go into the next stitch purl wise on the front. And if you transfer all knit stitches to one needle and all purl stitches to a needle, you can also do it. Well, it's the basic Kitchener stitch then. Um, but in this case, you do it on one needle. And I think you can already see that this will create a super invisible edge. Here at the very end, I want to show you how to knit the fisherman's rib in two colors. So this is just as easy, but it will be a four row repeat. So I cast on 11 stitches and I already joined in a new color with a simple knot around my working yarn and I slide that all to uh, the base of the last stitch. But I don't knit with that color yet. Instead, I will knit my setup row. So it's gonna be one salvage stitch and then knit one, purl one across the whole row, just the way I showed you before. So there's literally no difference here. The only difference is that I joined in a new color already, but uh, you could do that later on as well. And then here I will do another knit stitch as a salvage. And now things get a little bit more complicated. Now you need to slide your work back to the other end. This means you can only knit the two colored fisherman's rib with double pointed needles or circular needles. And now I'm going to pick up the other yarn and I'm going to slip the first stitch, but I'm going to slip it twisted. So like this, so coming in from behind. And then I am going to knit one and then purl below. Knit one and purl below. Remember before I showed you that if you purl below, you can knit the fisherman's rib just as well. It's a little bit difficult here in the first row, but so go slowly. Purl below. 
in here that last stitch we are going to slip twist it as well tighten up and now both tails are dangling down here on this side and this means you can turn your work around and you need to pick up the uh, green yarn but you need to do it twisted so you need to twist these yarn around uh, so you trap the trap the blue color and then you can knit across with purl one and then again purl below knit one purl below knit one and you will notice that purling below is much easier here in the second round a row when there are more stitches um, available and then we are going to purl that last salvage stitch as well again slide things back to the other end pick up the blue yarn again slip that first stitch twisted and now purl one oops purl one and then knit below so I told you it's a four row repeat and um, now you can, this is the third row, and now you can knit below the way you probably usually would. Purl one, and again, slip that last stitch, twist it. Now both tails are dangling down on this side here, so this means you can turn things around and pick up the green yarn again, but again, you need to do it twisted. Twisted. So you always need to twist these uh, yarns and then knit across and then knit below. So this is going to be our fourth row in the repeat. So you knit below and from here on you can repeat these four rows over and over again. So knit below, oh, let the yarn here, knit below. And knit that last salvage stitch as well. From here, I told you to repeat things over and over again. So slide everything back to the other end. Slip that stitch twisted. Knit one and purl below. Knit one and purl below. Knit one and purl below, and so on. And con again, continue repeating these four rows over and over again. Here, that last stitch, we are going to slip twist it again. And then turn things around and so on. Now, after a couple of rows, you may notice that your uh, two colored fisherman's rib doesn't look like this. So typically what you need to do is you need to stretch out your fabric in all directions so the little slack at the back side of each stitch can settle in and recede into the fabric and typically then things will look much better or the way it should another thing i really urge you to do is take a moment and research some selvage stitch alternatives this is just one way to knit a selvage stitch for a two colored fisherman's rib but there are many other versions they are all not perfect so they all have their little downsides and it really boils down to personal preferences. Um, I happen to like this um, twisted slip stitch selvage a lot though. Anyway, that's how to knit the fisherman's rib. Please like this video if you enjoy watching, comment with your questions and your feedback. And of course, don't forget to subscribe in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.